So recently you were given a quiz and this quiz involved another three-fourths rule problem, this being the brake pedal. Now, this brake pedal question is just one of a myriad of brake pedal questions that you are likely to see uh, through your time in the course. Brake pedals really typify that sort of three-fourths rule situation. So we've got a brake pedal shown, determine the vertical reaction in the master cylinder, and then one B, determine, now determine the reaction at C for the same brake pedal. So in your quiz, it's broken up in two parts with multiple choice responses. But let's go through and see how this problem is solved. I'm going to run you through three different solutions. And before we do that, let's have a bit of a talk about what's happening here. So many of you will be learning to drive now, or you'll have seen someone driving, and you know that you've got brake pedal on the car. Those of you that drive a manual also know you've got a clutch pedal, which often works in a similar manner. So we have a force applied on the brake pedal. The brake pedal obviously has a pivot underneath the dash panel somewhere. In this case, it's pivot C, and it's acting on a vertical master cylinder. That's not very common nowadays, but nonetheless, that's what we've got in this question. Now, when you push on the pedal at A, you tend to make the pedal rotate in an anti-clockwise manner. That's going to push that rod into the master cylinder as it rotates anti-clockwise. So that's the action on the master cylinder. But that's not what you feel. When you push your foot on the pedal, you'll feel resistance from the master cylinder as you try to push that hydraulic fluid through the system. So the reaction at B is actually going to be going down. It's going to be traveling down and it's going to resist that force of that you apply at A. Otherwise, you push your foot on at A and the pedal would just go straight to the floor. And if that happens with a brake pedal, you usually are in a bit of trouble. Now, C obviously has a very important role here. If I have a reaction going down here, and I have a force that's going down and to the right here, I've got all these downwards forces. I need a force that balances it. I need a force to put the system in equilibrium. So that must be the reaction at C. Now we don't know its direction, we know nothing about it, but we know that it must balance these two forces. So I can ascertain really by judgment that it's definitely going to have an upwards component, so going up vertically up, and it's probably going to be going to the left because this force is going to the right, it has, it's going down and to the right, so it has a horizontal component going to the right. Therefore, chances are this has got to go left to balance that. So I'm going to have a force that's going off in this direction. Now hopefully you can all clearly see we have one force here, one force here, and then we've just said there's going to be a reaction at C. So that's a three-force rule problem. So there's three forces acting on the brake pedal. We've set it to equilibrium, it's not falling down or anything like that. So we want to find the reaction at B and then we're going to find the reaction at C. Now, there are three ways we can do this. First off, we can solve it using the three-force rule using graphical methods. The second method I'm going to show you is the three-force rule and I've called it graphalytical because there's a mixture of graphical and analytical here. And you'll probably remember we've already done some of those from our concurrent forces booklet, where we actually use the protractor to measure an angle of the third force, and then we use the sign rod. And solution three is moments and summing forces. So let's go through all of these and see how we go. So the first method is to do it by the graphical three-force rule. Now, doing it this way, we're going to determine both forces in the one process. We're not going to find one force and then find another through, another through an additional process. So even though the question is in two parts, 1A and 1B, in this method, you're going to find them all at the same time. Now, let's have a look at what's happening first. Let's extend the line of action of the 120 Newton force. Let's extend the line of action of the master cylinder because we know the master cylinder is vertical. We know this one's at 30 degrees. This one is unknown. But when we, need to, when we extend these line of actions, we find a point of concurrency. And since these three forces are clearly not parallel, they must be concurrent by the three force rule. So we can see that I've extended this line of action down through here until it intersects, and that finds me the point of concurrency. I already knew the point of concurrency. That finds me the direction of that force. So now I know the direction of all three forces. 
Now it's tempting to now measure that and redraw it as a force diagram, but what I've done, I've already got this line of action drawn in, and I've got a vertical line here that's drawn on the page. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the stuff that's already there and just create a large graphical solution. So if I zoom out here, you can see that I've extended the line, I've centered that line down there that was vertical on the page. I've extended this line of action of this force for all I know it's, is its direction. I've then taken a 30 degree line and I've drawn it in at 120 degrees there like that, uh, sorry, at 120 Newton length there like that, according to my scale. Notice I've stated my scale, it's important to do that, so that the marker, well remember we're thinking always of heading towards the HSC exam, the marker is always going to know that you've set a scale and that you're working as a scale drawing. So I've drawn that in there. Now, when I extended these lines down, I basically fit that line in so it closed that triangle. And that sets the limit of this force because it was unknown in magnitude, only known in direction. And that set the limit of this line here, once again, unknown in magnitude, but known in direction. And now because it's a scale drawing, I've merely measured these lines and I said RB was 169 millimetres and that equates according to my scale to be approximately 422.5 newtons going down and RC was 197 millimetres and that's approximately 493 newtons at an angle of 78 degrees. I've rounded that one off there. Now, we all know that graphical solutions have an inherent amount of inaccuracy in them. And that's exacerbated by the fact that this angle here is only 12 degrees. If that's at 78 degrees, it must be to the horizontal, it must be 12 degrees to the vertical. And I measured that with my protractor and I found it to be 12 degrees. Now that's quite a small angle, so any sort of variation there is going to throw these numbers out quite a bit. But in an HSC solution, if you did it this way and showed it the way I have, with the arrows shown on the diagram and make it clear it's a force diagram, clearly stating RB equals this in millimetres, that's what it is in newtons, you're going to get full marks. So whilst there might be a slight amount of inaccuracy there, in terms of bang for your bucks, you found both forces at the same time, and all you had to do was measure them off. So if you use your scale drawing correctly, you use your graphical solution correctly, it gives you quite a quick way to solve this problem. But what if you decided you didn't want to do it graphically with a scale drawing? Can you use the sign rule? Well, yes, you can. So in this method here, I've done the same thing as I did before. I've extended the line of actions here, and I've found the point of concurrency. I've measured that angle with my protractor. Notice I've stated over here 12 degree angle as measured. Just to make it clear to anyone viewing, where did I get that 12 degrees from? I measured it. The diagram's the scale, so I've measured it. Now, you actually can determine this because you can determine it analytically because that angle in there is 30 degrees and I've got a right triangle here and I can use that distance there to determine that distance. Once I've got that distance, I can add it onto that one and I can actually find that angle exactly and it's 11.9 degrees. Now, that means that my answer is going to be off what the final answer is because I'm off slightly with the angle. As I said, a small change in a small angle will bring about a difference. But nonetheless, let's have a look at how we go about doing this one. So unlike before, we're not going to draw a scale diagram, so I've changed my diagram slightly. I've exaggerated the 12 degree angle to make it a bit clearer. So I've drawn my force triangle here. There's 12 degrees because I've measured that. This is 120 degrees because it's uh, 30 degrees below the horizontal, so 90 plus 30. And then this is 48 degrees because the angle on the triangle is 180. I know RB is there, and I know RC is there, and I know that's 120 newtons. So now it just becomes a process of using the sign rule. So I find RB using the sign rule will be 428.92 newtons. And now I've used the sign rule to find RC and I found it to be 499.84 newtons. I already knew the direction, so I don't need to state the directions there. So when I put my answer down the bottom, I've got 428.92 going down, 499.84 going up. So I've removed the inaccuracy that comes from the scale diagram. It's still a relatively quick solution. I'm only using the sign rule, which doesn't take too much mathematical work, and it's not too much working out to write in there. 
So I'm still seeing straight away the directions that are involved. So I'm mixing the three force rule graphical with some analytical solution, hence the term grapholytical. Now, a lot of students won't approach it this way. If you're not confident with the three force rule, you'll take one look at that problem and go, ah, oh, it's a moments problem. And I've left the moment solution to the end because sadly it's the longest one. Now there's a time and place for moments and a time and place for three force rule. This is probably right at the edge of where you would use the three force rule because of that small angle. But it's quite appealing because what we're going to see is the moment solution takes quite a bit more work. So let's have a look at the moment solution as it stands. So first off, let's step back from the problem and think again. What we have is we have a known force here a force with a known direction but unknown magnitude and an unknown force here. Now, to do this, I have to take moments about somewhere and the most logical place is C. I don't know the direction of C, so I can't break it up into vertical and horizontal components. I don't know its angle, so I can't find a perpendicular distance to B or A. And there's no way I'd sum moments about A, I'd only be summing them about B or C because this is known and these are both unknown to some degree. So this one really has to be eliminated. So I'm going to sum moments about C first. Now that allows me to take moments, I've got known forces here and I've got a force of a known direction but unknown magnitude. So I will be able to find B. Now once I've used moments to do that, really moments ends there and now it becomes a summation of forces. And this problem is just like that fishing rod problem in the moments booklet. And you remember how long that problem was? Well that's going to go the same way. So first, sum moments about C to find the reaction at B. Then we're going to sum forces vertical to find the vertical component of C. Then we're going to sum forces horizontal to find the horizontal component of C. Then we're going to add together the vertical and horizontal components to find the actual reaction at C and then state its magnitude and angle. Yes, it is a longer process to do it this way. So how do we go about doing this? Well, first we're going to sum the moments about C to find the reaction at B. So summing the moments about C, there's each of our moments, put in brackets to try and separate them out and make it nice and clear. So the vertical component times 144, the horizontal component times 250, and the reaction B times by that distance 80. And what I end up with is RB 432.76 newtons going down. The reaction is going down as I've drawn in there. That's my answer found there like that. Now that's the easy part really, because now comes the convoluted summing forces vertical and horizontal. So remember, I've got a vertical component here, I've got a vertical force here, so I now need to find what the vertical reaction is here. So I'm going to add those two together, summing forces vertical, I've got RCV going up minus 432.76 minus 60, and I end up with 492.76 newtons going up. Now I need to sum forces horizontal. Now that's pretty straightforward, there's only this horizontal force, so the horizontal reaction at C is going to be equal to that. Now I've got an upward force and I've got a force to the left, so I need to add those two together vectorially to find the total reaction at C. I've now used Pythagoras to find 503.6 newtons and I've found my angle to be 78.1 degrees. And you'll recognise that those numbers are the numbers that are in the quiz because that's the exact answer. And that's the one, one real advantage of this method. Because everything was done analytically, there was no measuring, no possibility for error, this gives you the correct answer. The problem is it's very time consuming. So there's a time and place for each method. If we want an exact answer, we go for this, but if we're also allowed to go for a method that allows a little bit of leeway, like a graphical method, it's going to tend to be quicker. This is a more time-consuming solution than the other ones. But where you might have run into a bit of a challenge is when we go back to the graphical solution, we can see that this answer here is much less 493 newtons, it's less than the 503 which we get uh, in the other method. So when we went down to our previous method here, uh, our moments method, 503.6, 
But when we go to the graphical solution, we get 493 newtons. And you may have looked at the, um, the answers, and one of the answers was, four nine, was around 493 newtons, but the force was vertical. And we know that it's not vertical. You can see that RC is not vertical. So even if you'd done it graphically, you would have looked at those, and this was the, uh, there was only one answer that had an angle at 78 degrees going in that direction. So even though your magnitude was off, you certainly could uh, recognise which was the correct response. I think brake pedals, like that pole that we looked at the other day, are those quintessential three-force rule problems. They can be solved by the three-force rule, they can be solved by a moment, but what we find is that usually the three-force rule allows us to generate a solution much more quickly, and that's something we need to be thinking about when we're trying to maximise the amount of marks we get in a certain amount of time in an examination situation.